Well, this week the Federal Court of Appeal unanimously ruled that a woman can wear a full face obscuring niqab in the citizenship court while she takes her citizenship oath. Well, our friend Raheel Raza has something to say about that. She joins us now. Raheel, great to see you again. Thank you. Now, you are a leading activist for women's rights within Islam. We've met you before in your role with the Honor Diaries film, and you're the president of, let me get this right, is this the Council of Muslim so, Faith? Council for Muslims Facing Tomorrow. Now, you wrote an, uh, an op-ed column in the Toronto Sun saying, keep burqas and niqabs not just out of courts, but out of everywhere. Tell me your reasoning. Well, absolutely, because, you know, this is a long battle that we've been involved in. The people who are pushing this face covering, this face mask, are pushing it on the basis of religious freedom. It's not religious. That ship has sailed a long time ago. And I've, I think I've said this to you before. It's not just me saying it. The most senior Islamic scholars have said that the face covering is not re a requirement. I'm a Muslim woman. I've read the Quran from cover to cover. Nowhere does it say that the face needs to be covered. As a matter of fact, when we go for the pilgrimage to Mecca for the Hajj, which is one of the pillars of Islam, you're not allowed to cover your face. Hmm. Now, you grew up in Pakistan as a Muslim woman. Uh, that's a uh, overwhelmingly Muslim society. Do people wear face obscuring veils, niqabs or hijabs well, on the street there? They never used to. Mm -hmm. My mother, my grandmother, who modestly covered their heads with a scarf, yeah. never covered their faces. It was only when the Wahhabi ideology from Saudi Arabia blew into Pakistan that you saw women starting to wear niqabs. So, so this is a political uh, Islam. It's not the religious Islam. It's very political. And I think it's important for people to understand who are the entities that actually impose this on their women. Mm. So let's look at the world. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Al-Nusra, the Taliban. These Those are all terrorist are the, groups. Yes, these are the people who force women to cover. So when we're talking about Canadian values, is this in sync with Canadian values? Yeah. We're talking about a cultural practice that is being forced on us here, and it should be made totally unconstitutional. Mm. Just the idea of a face covering, because it's a face mask. Yeah. You know, the Quran tells us that your identity is very important. It also tells us don't make a mockery of your religion. Right. So dressing up from head to toe in a black garb and covering your face is making a mockery out of yeah. Islam as far as I look at it. What is frustrating to me is that one of Canada's, I think, self-identities, one of the things we like to think of ourselves as liberal, progressive, we gave women the right to vote before many other countries. I mean, when we have a woman premier or prime minister, we, have, we mark that as a landmark. And yet all those feminists are silent when, when the religiously directed dehumanization of women, when you blot out a woman's face, you blot out so much of her identity and her individuality, and yet these feminists are silent. The same ones who would be outraged if it was, say, the Catholic Pope or Billy Graham or Franklin Graham doing it. Is that just fear of being called racist? Well, it's many things. It's political correctness, but it's also a win for the Islamists because this is exactly what they have done. They have started this industry called Islamophobia so that if you say anything, you're going to be slammed with racism and Islamophobia. And they have tried to pass off this face covering as a religious requirement. Mm. No, nobody wants to touch anyone else's religion. Right. So the whole premise is based on a lie. Oh. Let me ask you a question. I, I saw an interesting comment on, on a blog the other day. Either it's a religious requirement, and so freedom of religion must compel the courts to let someone wear a face covering, or it's a woman's free choice. And both of those arguments are used uh, switching between them by those who are pro-burqa, pro-nikab. If people say, well, you're forcing women to be submissive and subordinate, no, 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 it's their free choice. Oh, well, if it's a free choice, then you don't have to wear it as a religious obligation. Oh, no. it's a I mean, it seems to oh, me it's go, slipping back and forth. Sure. They go back and forth. They, you know, segue between one thing or the other because they're telling a lie. When you're telling a lie, you have to keep on backtracking. It is not a religious requirement. As I said, don't take my word for it. Yes. Islamic scholars have said so. But the problem is that they are trying to push this as a religious requirement. Yeah. But it's not even about the woman's clothing. It's not about the woman's niqab. It's about identity. It's about not wearing a face mask. And I believe that the government should really push this to the very end and make it unconstitutional to cover your face and to cover your identity, no matter who it is. Last question. I, uh, I, I find this to be a war on women 
but it's men who are enforcing it. And when I see a Muslim woman wearing a niqab, I have a variety of emotional responses, but I think the most appropriate one is, who is doing this to you? Because even though some Muslim women protest and say, I'm voluntarily wearing a sack, I'm voluntarily blotting out my identity, I suspect that in the background there is either a sexist husband, father, brother, imam, or community that at the very least has a lot of peer pressure, and God forbid in the extreme cases, resorts to honor killings. So it's, I almost feel like we're talking to hostages who can't speak truthfully. They're saying, oh no, I'm happy in this one woman prison, but they couldn't speak the truth even if they wanted to. You're absolutely right. And the perfect example of this is that the people who have come up to debate me on this have been men. Hmm. They can't even find a woman who will come and talk about the issue. So it's the men speaking for the women, which I find so offensive. It's always the men speaking for the women. And of course, you know, we're living in the 21st century. We are normal human beings. If you decided that you wanted to walk around in a sack, then what would I call you? I'd call you a part of a cult. Yeah, There's something yeah. extremely wrong yeah. with that thinking. Yeah. And there is no difference between this and a cult. We are not talking here about religion. Yeah. I mean, the Ku Klux Klan covers their faces yeah, with point. masks. Yeah. So are we going to say, oh, we're going to allow this to, for them on the basis of religious freedom? Yeah. I think we have a lot of hard questions as Canadians to ask ourselves. And I can tell you that I came to this country as an immigrant. 30 years ago, and I came here to embrace a liberal democracy, a freedom of voice, a freedom of choice. And when I see women from my country, from my part of the world, turning from being completely normal to donning themselves from head to toe in a niqab, it really, really bothers me because there is definitely pressure behind it. Yeah. Rahil Raza, you're an amazing spokesman for so many values we believe in. We wish you good luck and we look forward to catching up with you. Thank you. You have so many journeys fighting for freedom around the world. It's great to catch up with you in Canada. Thank you, Ezra. Thank nice you so much. You. Thank you.